स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय दे The path of devotion to reach the supreme and ordinary jiva and individual roaming about in this world climbs to the peak of his spiritual unfoldment just by loving God and offering his services to the Lord. Like a small creeper by the side of a tree, a seed falls flying in the air somewhere, drops by the side of a tree, grows into a small creeper. Creeper can only creep on the ground. It cannot stand. A plant or a bush, a herb or a shark can stand, though not to the level of a huge tree, <coughs> but creeper cannot. That creeper just stretches itself to the tree holds it and slowly with it tendons grips the tree and goes on climbing. Climbs, climbs, slowly turns round in such a way it will not fall down anymore. It goes on circumambulating around the tree and slowly climbs up like a spiral to reach the topmost point of the tree. Huge tree to the height. It climbs to the height of the tree and beyond and spreads itself over the tree. So is this jiva stretches itself slowly goes round in a spiral way, elevating, slowly elevating itself through its love. Love embraces and it goes on climbing, reaches the supreme in all aspects, engulfs it and stretches itself beyond. So, this is the stretch of the jiva loitering in the world here and there. One day flies and falls into the seed at the feet of the Lord. Climbs to the height and this is the tree is the personal God. The creeper is the jiva which engulfs the personal God and stretches beyond to the impersonal absolute. In this, he has to conquer the nature and go. And each conquest must not be against the nature, but be a utility from the nature. Each growth is an extraction from the earth in which it is growing. Nature is the earth for us and each conquest is climbing up with the tendons holding the tree. 
With each conquest you get a tendon and a shoot ahead. And this conquest we saw various Amayam, Anahankaram, Aragam, Amadam Tata, Amohakam, Amo Adambancha, Advesha Akshobhakau Tata, Amatsaryam, Anobancha, Dashapushpa, Vidurpudaha. We came up to Amatsaryam. One by one we saw our inner, though often it seems to be an enemy within, but it is not. It is nature's help that was keeping us safe in the world and was helping us to evolve to our divinehood. Each conquest, with each conquest, I stretched with a tendon ahead and a shoot up. So each was like a force that falls and recoils in the back. A bullet goes away, but the recoiling for recoiling, it needed some energy. Each recoil is a movement towards the source. So we saw a matsaryam, freedom from matsarya. Matsarya is jealousy which is full of intolerance along with the destructive idea of getting rid of the enemy. We got the example of Duryodhana, the Kauravas expressing their dislike, intolerance, jealousy, hatred, these are different shades of the same hatred, which vengeance, all these are different. All these were applied and forced upon the Pandavas in various ways they expressed. We have seen in the Mahabharata how it evolved from the childhood and before. So this is Bhatsarya, which is going to long, long course of destructive force. And when you go beyond it, in a very human, this will be maybe in small degree or large degree. It will be there in some source. You can see for no reason somebody is hating someone. There is no genuine reason. Suppose a daughter-in-law hates mother-in-law or mother-in-law hates their daughter-in-law or brothers brothers hate each other or in with hatred with a neighbor or someone else in the office. Anywhere, anybody hating anyone need not be because of the error of the one who is getting hated. It is mostly in each one there is hatred, love, everything. They have to focus somewhere. They have to pour it out somewhere because it is something like a poison, poison which is within and has a source behind. It is like a poisonous tree which is growing. It needs a space where it can throw its seeds and leaves, shed its leaves. Like that, love also. Each person loves someone, not because something great qualities are there or it is going to help his evolution. But the love within has to be poured somewhere. Hatred has to be poured somewhere. 
on some one or the other it aims we see in the lives of saints so many people hating them not in saint what could be there which attracts their hatred there is nothing except love and compassion they don't have anything in their heart neither the words hurt them but they do come sir ravana what did the others do in their raging we see holy people because they take the name of god some kind of hatred somewhere and that has to be in us also to some way and there will be always one person whom we dislike one person whom we love and this dislike will go away not when the person whom we dislike changes when my hatred within i have gone cut i see the divine everywhere again and start loving this transformation of my getting rid of hatred the quality of hatredness in me when i eliminate it i see the divine in the same person whom i was hating and this seeing divine because my getting rid of hatred within me is one more elevation it is one more offering to the lord i am able to see the moment i claim one i the moment i get rid of something uh, i get a flower the flower is flower of joy flower of freedom flower of divinization flower of a new vision and this flower i have to offer it to god because i can never claim it to be mine because i cannot conquer any aspect of nature within me good or bad i cannot conquer the jiva cannot conquer the nature nature is so powerful so strict so stern so so perfect i am imperfect imperfection cannot conquer the perfection so it needs divine help to conquest conquer the defects also in me defects are another part of the creation creation has two aspects negative and positive both are there in me i have to get rid of the negative just to climb up if negative is there in me i'll be in the world of i am being tossed why am i being tossed unnecessarily because nature is constantly changing flux when it changing if you put some stones in a thing which is revolving constantly in its own way in a mixer mixer or in a concrete mixer if you put them it it is the stones in it or the material in a mixer they do not revolve but what revolves is the container which makes it tosses everything grinds everything so this is what the nature is constantly changing and i am getting i am within the nature and getting tossed and the only way to come to rest is to go out of the nature to go beyond the nature and nature has a plan for the jiva who is evolving to transcend its limitations and enter into the transcendent realm of eternal peace everlasting joy unending bliss so this is what happens and each conquest is a plan of nature each evolution is a plan of nature within is the bhava bhava pushpa i am getting emotionally involved with my love offering each one 
this eyes of love can open the vision of God. So these Bhava Pushpas of conquest of nature I am offering to the Lord Amatsaryam Alobhancha Lobha Lobha is greed. Greed, there is need and greed. There are two things I need for life. When we were children at home in our Purvashrama days, my father used to tell us, don't confuse between the need and the greed. Greed will harm you, destroy you, destroy you. Need will support your life. And how to distinguish between need and greed? He used to tell us, you, whenever you need anything in your life, you want to buy, you want to have, you want to possess, then see whether you can live without it. When you can live without it, it is a greed. It is not no more a need. I cannot live with it. I find it extremely difficult to live with it, without it. Uh, then it is a need. For example, my health. Anything that is concerned with my health, I have to attend to. I may be able to live with that problem, but it is extremely difficult to live with that problem. Suppose I have pain in my neck or I have headache. I can continue with the headache. I can continue with the pain in the neck. But I, I am limited by it. I am limited by it. Similarly, I want a one more slipper. I have got one. It might have become old. I want to buy a new footwear. Then ask, can I live without a new footwear? For some more time, can I pull on with the old one? Yes, I can pull on. How long? I can pull on a year. Then don't buy. I have clothes. I have got three pairs. Do I want one more? Uh, rainy season? Uh, then I have two hours sufficient daily exchanging. One already I have extra, then it is sufficient I can manage with the three. Suppose one is torn in rainy season, it takes, it may take two days to dry up, it may, I may find it difficult. So three plus the torn one, I need three. So I, shall I have four? No, it becomes a greed. Hmm. I have my hands and feet, I can bend, I can move a boat, I can do, I want to sweep and swab the uh, floor in the house. I can sit down, I can kneel down, I can wipe with my hand stretched with wet cloth. Then do I need a um, swab, this one, what do you call it? Mm. The mob. 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 Do I need a mob? No. It is a greed. I can wash with my hands my clothes. It takes few minutes to wash. Do I need a... I am young. I am energetic. I am not <coughs> bacterial. I can wash with my hands. Do I need a washing machine? It becomes greed. It becomes from comfort from need to comfort, comfort to luxury. I am going as if towards the luxury. And the more I pamper my bodily existence, pamper my bodily existence, then I will see that I am becoming intensely body. My spiritual awareness is decreasing. So more comfort you give to the bodily existence and it is to put on the strain upon the bodily existence we call tapas. To strain the mind with 
forcibly keeping it, trying to keep it on the divine. Its natural tendency is to run after the world and I restrict it and make, I want to freely move about it. I want to freely think about unwanted things. Instead, I want it to focus on reading some scriptures. It becomes tapas. So each thing I contradict, my natural tendency of my inner self, inner soul, as if it is possessing my inner soul, is to become be idle, get maximum, and put uh, output will be minimum. If I can get food without efforts, it will be so nice. I want to sit, lie down, and eat and spend my. But to take the blow on the shoulder in the morning, go to the field, blow the field, stand in the waters. Do the bring up the crop, har, do the harvest to for the sake of few rotis. How strenuous it is, and this strain will make you evolve. Otherwise, you'll be entering into stagnation. And more from luxury, from comfort to luxury, when you go, you will see you are done the decadence on the anti-growth instead of growing you are slipping down slipping behind backward motion so this elimination uh, how I stole everything I take tapas I take upon myself the strain of making my livelihood and with that livelihood, I am going to offer my body and mind to the nature and to the divine and for the service of others. So, with this tapas, I am acquiring a power to conquer nature. Why should we do tapas? Why should I do fasting? Why should I sit instead of seeing the television or sitting with cell phone, I can uh, do some spiritual studies. Yeah, I'm going to spend and I'm restraining my mind from its free movement to force it on something that is elevating me. With each study, my consciousness is expanding. My attention is expanding from self-centered life to the world-centered life, from the individual to the cosmic. I am expanding in consciousness. Expansion is my evolution. Expansion is spirituality. Expansion of consciousness is attainment of God. Expansion of heart is moving towards the cosmic I, the Ishvara, the Lord of the universe. So the more I do tapas, more I strain myself, more I impose the, I welcome and impose the strain upon myself. I face all the odds of life joyfully for my evolution. Look at the seed that you put in the earth and put a little water. How it germinates. It is against the earth in which you have planted the seed. You have sown the seed and watered it. It germinates and the hard heavy mud it slowly raises against the nature is growth, the growth in nature is against the forces that suppress it. That's why we call it growth, development. And the nature tries to suppress, nature tries to divert. I have to work against the force for evolution because nature is what brings you down and divine is what 
elevates you. So in divine working through the nature for evolution, we call Vidya Maya. Nature uh, which makes you down to go down hmm, and be a slave of senses and mind towards the materialistic life is what we call the Avidya Maya. Avidya Maya forces you down and to the, the involution process and Vidya Maya is what makes you evolve to the uh, divine. So the Alobhancha, getting rid of greed, how deep you see, how you have to work within yourself, take little strain, take little strain. What is there in giving so much of uh, importance to the body? Let it work for the welfare of the others. Let it work for the mind and body, body-mind complex. Let it work for your own evolution. How much of time in a day are you going to spend for good of yours and good of others? How much of time you are wasting in life? If you see after 24 hours, how many hours are you going to meditate, think of God and help others, seek others' welfare? How much time you are spending for your own comforts and luxuries of life, for your own maintenance, for your own self-centered life? You are exploiting others, exploiting nature constantly for your own self when it turns for the welfare of all. Your life is a life of sacrifice, then you will show Aloha is emerging out. Aloha Pushpa, you are blooming in you. Uh, we must slowly move from self-centered life to the universal life of world-centered life. Then you must evolve to the cosmic centered life, God centered life. So this is Alobha. And these, we say, Dasha Pushpam Vidur Buddha. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha is a man who has realized God, who is a man of wisdom. This wisdom, many noble people, who have not realized God also are wise. They have wisdom. This wisdom, there, there are three types of wisdom. Wisdom that is makes you, you use your brain and heart to hear for enjoyment. It is called worldly wisdom. I know how to manage the forces working in nature for, and others utilize others, others' funds and all to make my living and make, make me enjoy this world. And I am called worldly wise. He is worldly wise. He knows how to make money, how to utilize others for his comforts and joy. Worldly wisdom. And there is wisdom by which he makes life. He, uh, he has wisdom not to exploit others, not to utilize others, but to do a living with his own efforts. This is the, what we call, the wisdom necessary for life. He is wise in life. He knows what is life, how to live in this world without harming others, without exploiting others, without taking away the wealth and property of others, without suppressing others, how to make this wisdom is a little higher type of wisdom which gives him happiness in the life and smooth uh, movement in the world. And there is higher wisdom, the wisdom that takes a man beyond the nature to everlasting peace where the suffering and bondage are eternally eliminated 
from, from one's life. This wisdom, who possesses and who has attained the divine, both are called Buddha. Buddha are the constantly elevating souls, we have transcended the limitations of nature and uh, the normal um, bindings of the world and are the verge of on the verge of reaching the supreme. So these are also called Buddha. They have gone beyond certain limits and just like the earth has got its gravity gravitational force, crossing the gravitational force of the earth. It has to go to the another planet, suppose. Crossing the gravity limits is what we call Buddha. They will reach. They are not under the pull of the nature. So they are Buddhas. Those who have reached the other planet, which is, which is their aim, they are also called Buddhas. They know what is this. These Amayam, Anankaram, Aragam, Amadam, Amogam, Adambamcha, Advesha, Akshobhaka, Uttata, Amatsaryam, Alobham. These ten are well known to the Buddhas. It's just completing the stanza and there are five more we'll see tomorrow. Om. Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur